In this video we will create an Additive Morpher modifier and unlike previous examples where you could only select one or two targets at a time and you had to manually add more ports for more targets, here we are going to try and explore the possibility of defining an arbitrary number of targets where user can simply add or remove any number of meshes into the morpher that they desire. So to start I'm going to create my base mesh which is just going to be a sphere and I'll create a couple of target nodes and it is important to remember that these target nodes are supposed to have the same amount of vertices as our base mesh just with as with any other blend shape or morpher modifier and to just differentiate the targets a little bit I'm going to throw some modifiers on them so this one will have a bend modifier and maybe this one will have a taper modifier on it just to give it a slightly different shape and uh, look for the final blend shape and this one maybe is just going to be smaller than the other ones. So this is going to be my ba base sphere and on top of it I will throw a modifier called lab polygon modifier which will contain the morpher itself. So I'll click the edit plugin button to bring up the editor and all of the default nodes in here I can simply erase, we do not need them including the output which was present here by default. So we have our base mesh input here and now we can also add our targets input. So this input will contain our target meshes and I'll call it targets and it is going to be an array of meshes. In previous examples whenever we specified an input which takes a mesh it's usually always one mesh and it produced a button for us inside the user interface but with an array of meshes which I'll do here by typing polygon mesh 3 then I'll press the right button to fill this view, uh, to fill this field and this is the important part, at the end I will create uh, two square brackets to denote that this is an array instead of a single mesh. So once I create an array of meshes inputs, you can see that now instead of a button we have a list here and inside this list a user is free to add or remove as many targets as they desire. So this kind of makes this plugin a lot more dynamic than in the previous examples. On top of the uh, targets we also need to specify weights for each target and to do this I'll just uh, drag and add a bunch of weight inputs. So this is going to be my input 1, then we're going to have weight 2 and then we're also going to have weight 3 and we can keep adding this. It is much more trivial than in the previous examples to add weights uh, so we can have more targets in the future. So for now we have four weights and let's set each one of them to a float value. So this means that they will take a scalar, scalar value um, as an input. So now that we have the four weights, let's actually go and assign the, the morph targets, uh, target meshes. So I'll just go and add our, our three meshes here. And because this is already a mesh array input, the targets, we don't really need to do anything with it, but the weights we also need to make into an array so that they can work side by side with the targets input. And to do that I will scroll down into my palette and in the collections, uh, collections rollout there is a create array node which I'll drag into my schematic view and I'll simply wire each weight into the items input of this node and it will take those individual weights as, and as a result it will produce an array of floating point values which we can now use in our plugin. So next thing I want to do is for each target I want to take its vertices or other positions of these vertices and I want to subtract from them the position of vertices in, in my base mesh to get the difference, uh, difference vectors for each one. And just so we can operate on, on individual targets for now, I'll create a separate graph. I can actually do this now through the palette. So I'll go to the modeling rollout and I create a graph node and double click to go into the graph node user interface and now I can add my input. So one of the inputs is going to be my base mesh, another input is going to be my target mesh and the last input is going to be a weight associated with this target mesh. The base and target mesh are going to be polygon mesh 3 values and I will need to assign this explicitly and the weight is going to be a floating point value. So now that we have this, I can drag out my ba base and target meshes 
and from them I can subtract the vertices one from another. To do this I'll go back to my arithmetic operators which can be found inside the palette as well and I will drag a subtract node and from the vertices of the target mesh I will subtract the vertices of the base mesh. And once we have subtracted them this node will actually contain the difference between the vertex positions of a target and base mesh and this difference can now be multiplied by the weight to control how much of this particular target node we want to see in our final blended shape. So let's also add a multiplier, uh, multiply node and we'll multiply the difference in vertex positions by the target weight and this will produce an array of vertices which we will use as a result for our graph. So here we have it, we, we have the final graph which we can call a difference graph and inside into the base input we can connect our mesh, our base mesh, into the target input we connect targets and into the weight input we create, a, we connect the created array of weights that we have done previously. And because this takes a single weight, but we have specified an array of weights, same as target, it takes a single mesh and we specified an array of meshes, this will also produce an array of array of vertices. This means that for, for each collection of vertices of uh, each target mesh, we will have uh, an array of those um, corresponding to each target mesh that is incoming to this graph. So the final thing to do now is to sum all of this up and to add them on top of our base mesh. So to sum this up I will add an um, add node which actually takes a bunch of inputs, arbitrary amount of inputs, and uh, I will need to connect my vertice, vertex differences into this add node to create a sum of all of these differences. But I cannot do this right now because if I, if I just wire this into this node right now it will produce uh, a sum of each respective of vertices of each respective mesh, and this is not something that we want to. Instead, we want to uh, we want to add vertices of uh, of each mesh with the vertices of each other mesh. And to do this, we actually need to take this array uh, of arrays, and we need to transpose it. There is a transpose node here, and by transposing it, we will basically flip it, flip it around, so that instead of having uh, vertices as rows, uh, vertices for each mesh as rows, we will have vertices of each mesh as columns inside this array. And now we can connect this output to this uh, summing node and this node will produce our final summed differences. Which we can now add on top of the original base mesh vertices. So I will add another add modifier here and I will drag out my mesh node and connect its original vertices to this add node. And to, to the second input I'll drag my, my uh, sum differences and now we have the final vertex positions of our final blended mesh. So this is going to be final vertices node. As the last step we just need to connect these vertices to a new instance of a polygon mesh. So I will go and create a polygon mesh and connect this as vertices. And since the polygons did not change from our original mesh, I can just connect the original polygons into this final result. I'll rename this result mesh. And the output of this can be wired as the result of our modifier. So there we have it. This is our final modifier. It's uh, if you can test it here, you can see that right now the weight one is controlling the blend blending between this one, uh, this uh, node on the right, and the blend two will make it smaller, and the blend three will make it more like the node on the left. So we can play around and we can uh, get different blend shapes working and uh, interpolate between them. And adding more uh, more target nodes is really as easily as adding more weights here. In reality I can add like a hundred weights and as long as I connect them to this weight array here everything else will be automatically handled by the modifier. So I can keep adding meshes or removing meshes and it'll only use as many meshes as are present inside of this list over here. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions about this or any of the other videos, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will try to get back to as many of them as I can.